Juliet is sharing his story about his battle with COVID-19. TJ Saposi is joining us now from his home to talk about his struggles. TJ, sorry that you got the virus. How long have you had it? How are you as far as uh, recovering is concerned and how do you think you got it? Well, I uh, started seeing some symptoms late March, uh, actually, right, I think April 1st, that Wednesday was the first day that it really started to hit me that something was wrong. Um, now I would say I'm probably 90 to 95% better. Most of the worst symptoms have seemed to kind of run their course. And I'm lingering with some uh, lack of taste and lack of sense of smell, uh, but it's been really a crazy ride. What started off is just some localized muscle issues and some spasticity in my feet and legs, things that I was really starting to attribute to a pre-existing condition that I had. Um, a couple days out from that, I woke up with a really high fever of about 103 and my bed was soaked in sweat. And from that point on, it was like 10 to 14 days of just very intense, uh, very intense pain, cough. Um, really, if there's a symptom that you've read about, I had it, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. I've lost almost 20 pounds during this entire process. Mm. So it's really been um, something I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. Mm. I think we've all uh, probably in the last couple of weeks thought about if we were to get it, how would we have gotten it? And it's really baffling. I'm sure I know you, you said you were a germaphobe. Do you have any idea how you picked this up? I, you know, I really don't. Uh, like I said, due to my pre-existing condition, I've I've been on the hook for some other things. I did get swine flu when that was a thing. Uh, I got the mumps during 2014 when the NHL had the mumps outbreak because my immune system is a little compromised. So I tend to uh, be very proactive about washing my hands, about not touching things where I think there might be an easy pass of germs. But with that said, I, I mean, I was shopping, I was living my life, I was adhering mostly to the shelter in place, but I did have to go out in public a bit. And there's really no telling where or when I officially and technically got it. How has this affected your job? Have you been able to work in any way? You are a photographer, I know. Right. Well, so I, by, by trade, I'm actually a data analyst. I'd worked the last six years for Molson Coors. And in our reorg at the end of this past year, my uh, my job was eliminated, so I'd been focusing on my freelance photography and another side hustle that I have. Uh, during this period, I really I had some outstanding editing work that I could do. So right as I started to get sick, I did a little bit of that. But as the intensity really grew, I was struggling to talk, to to have conversations. I had really severe ringing in my ears. Mm. Uh, last Tuesday, I was supposed to have a job interview that I ended up having to cancel because, as you can imagine, having a phone interview when you feel like you're being stabbed in the base of your, you know, where your earlobe touches your neck, that little divot that you have there. Both sides of my neck just continuously felt like really radiating pain. And for about a two or three day span, I was having a really hard time concentrating and focusing and I was losing my balance a lot. So I haven't really been able to get much work done at this point. So we're hoping now that I'm getting hope towards the end of it, that that will change. So as we start to talk about reopening the economy, TJ, what would you tell people as they start to head out having gone through this? Um, I, I know that there's a very mixed uh, bag about what people think about this. And the reality is, is I've seen it firsthand, not just through myself, but through other people I know that have had it. And I've seen mild cases, I've seen moderate cases, I've seen really severe cases, and it's real. It's something that we all need to be concerned about. And I know people want to get back to their jobs and they want to get back out in public living the life that they're accustomed to living. But the reality is, is there's an opportunity cost and is it worth people losing their lives? And as far as I'm concerned, I don't really think that it is. So I'm just kind of trying to do my part and tell my story in the hopes that people can realize that this isn't a joke and it is meant to be taken seriously. And although I'm getting to a point where I'm better and feeling a bit okay, that it's a long path and I'm definitely lucky. So there are a lot of people out there who aren't gonna be this lucky. Well, TJ, right. get better soon. Thank you so much. Thanks for sharing your time, TJ. Appreciate it. My pleasure.